So when we look at a, a biopsy of a patient with LCH, we see many different kinds of cells. We see the Langerhans cells, which may be 40 to 60% of all the cells in that biopsy. We see the T lymphocytes, maybe 13 to 18%. We see macrophages, eosinophils, and even some B lymphocytes. And what this tells us is that this is a, 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 a problem where the immune system has gotten too activated and it's collecting a bunch of the immune system cells in one place and the Langerhans cells as the kind of predominant population have always been thought of as kind of the bad guy here. We're not so sure about that today but it's yet to be proven whether the lymphocytes also might be part of the process. We do know that there are a lot of growth factors from the immune system that are present at higher levels in these LCH biopsies than you would find in a normal person's uh, tissues. And that is sign of the activated immune system. And many different investigators, uh, starting back in the mid-90s uh, to currently, have done a variety of techniques to find evidence of these uh, growth factors. And back in the mid-90s, uh, George Kanarakis and Abdul Abbas and Jan de Graaf and, and published some papers in which they looked at the whole LCH lesions, and they found this list of growth factors you see here, interleukin-1, 3, 4, 8, the GMCSF, TNF-alpha, TGF-beta, and some others. Later in 1999, uh, Martin Egler did a very elegant study in which he tried to look at each kind of cell in the biopsy, and he found that the uh, Langerhans cells tend to uh, make TNF-alpha and interleukin-11, and that the T lymphocytes tended to make the interleukins 1, 2, 4, and 5 and interfere on gamma, and that some of the macrophages made uh, interleukin 10 and GMCSF. Others, uh, including uh, uh, Dr. Geisman uh, in France, did some elegant experiments in which they actually took the Langerhans cells out of the biopsy when they were still fresh tissue, so they were living cells, and if he took away that interleukin 10, the cells suddenly grew up in a normal way and acted the way they were supposed to be for the immune system. So what this told us is that the immune system has stimulated these cells but frozen them in kind of a, a immature state in which they're not doing the right things, they're kind of off in the wrong path and causing this disease. And we really don't understand why that's happened. So our lab and others have tried to dig into this a little deeper and find out what other growth factors. And we've found a bunch of uh, genes that have been turned on by looking at individual cells. And we've listed another group of growth factors that you can see here on the slide. Uh, and some others uh, have been found by, by other groups. And what this has told us is that the immune system is activated in so many ways and it's really quite confusing now trying to figure out who's on first and who's on second and how did they get there. So there are uh, more detailed experiments I'm going to talk to you about at the end of this uh, presentation where we're trying to put this all together. S save it to say the immune system has really gone crazy in these lesions. I mean it's not crazy all over the body, but within the LCH lesions, things are pretty mixed up. So in another way of trying to figure out what's going on, we can see if these cells have come from one uh, great grandperson cell, like that stem cell that I talked about. And in fact, in the mid-90s, uh, several of us did a research project and we found that there was evidence that they did come from one origin cell. We call that a clonal proliferation. And some people take that as evidence that this might be kind of a cancer or a malignancy. There have also been uh, recent uh, investigations in which investigators have found evidence of changes in the DNA of these cells, that there could be losses or gains of DNA from certain chromosomes. That again has been used as surrogate, surrogate evidence that this might be kind of a cancer. On the counter uh, side of this, uh, we look at these cells under the microscope and they don't look like cancer. They're normal looking cells, they don't have all the weird shapes that a cancer cell does, and also they're accompanied by a lot of other cells, the macrophages, the lymphocytes, the eosinophils, and that's a condition which we call a granuloma, or just a description of an immune system reaction in which there are so many different cells. And typically in a cancer, you see one kind of cell just covering the whole field, maybe intermixed with a few of these others, 
but not with such great regularity as in the longer Hans lesion. So my point b is that there's such a, a mixture of cells in LCH that it really smells more like an immune system problem to some of us. So the debate goes on, and I won't say that we have the final answer, but there's still quite a vigorous uh, you know, controversy in the field as to whether we should call this a neoplasm cancer or a, an abnormal immune reaction. When we look at patients uh, with this disease, there are several characteristic findings. And if uh, we do an x-ray of the skull, one of the typical findings is a hole in the skull. And this poor child has many, many hole holes that probably have been there for quite a long time. Uh, these would present as a painful lesion, a painful bump that would be kind of squishy, or maybe there would be no obvious external characteristic, but the x-ray of the skull shows all of these punched out lesions. If it gets into the backbone or the vertebrae, the vertebrae will collapse and you'll have a flat thing like this vertebrae, which is about less than half the normal size of a vertebrae. We know that if we give therapy that this vertebrae might return some of its height, but maybe not all of it. Another finding by x-ray is in the chest that there's this streakiness in the lungs. And instead of the lungs being kind of black as you see on the outer part of this x-ray or kind of grayish, there's too much white stuff that's streaking out into the, into the uh, area out close to the edge of the chest. And this is evidence of, of the disease, which is even better seen by a chest CT that will show little open balloon-like uh, circles we call blebs or nodules, which means a little collection of cells like a bump. It's kind of challenging uh, looking at a patient and trying to figure out do they have bone involvement or not, because sometimes the plain x-rays or a nuclear medicine scan called a bone scan will show lesions or uh, that are present by the x-ray but not by the bone scan or vice versa. And one of the challenges is if we give therapy to the patient, how can we figure out if that bone lesion is getting better? The uh, regular x-ray is not going to change for many, many weeks or months, and the bone scan doesn't change for many weeks or months either. So typically in the therapy of these patients, we want to see how they do by the sixth week, and it's very difficult by bone scan or skeletal films to show that. At our center, we've been doing a, a, a little investigation to find out if an, a new uh, imaging technique called PET scans could be helpful. And this is another nuclear medicine study in which a, a very low le level radioactive sugar molecule is put into the blood and it uh, circulates throughout the body and goes to areas of high metabolic activity. And this has been used for cancer diagnoses and, uh, and some other conditions and we thought it might be uh, helpful for uh, LCH. So we did this for uh, several patients, in fact over 44 patients, and it found that it does show a change at six weeks. If our therapy is working, the PET scan is not going to be as hot at six weeks. And it also, importantly, correlated with the sites of, of pain where a patient complained of a problem, but yet the plain x-ray didn't show any abnormality. So in this picture of a patient's uh, PET scan, we see on this leg right here, there's kind of a hot spot where there isn't in, on the other side. And indeed, this young boy who had already been diagnosed with LCH once before and came back with new symptoms, we found this abnormality and it gave us evidence that he had recurrent disease and that he needed treatment and in fact with treatment this went away.